Hello, welcome back to the second session exploring seascapes using wax resist techniques. Today we're going to be looking at creating much more stormy skies and choppy sea. Okay, so here are two examples that I've created earlier um, using the wax resist technique and some cooler colours. Um, as you can see on this one, um, I've done some fairly sort of choppy squiggly marks on the on the sea and also around the edges of the rocks here um, this one i have used um, some um, cobalt blue with a little touch of yellow ochre in the water um, and Payne's gray for the rocks and the grassy area in the foreground and this one here um, i have used um, Payne's gray cobalt blue um, wax resist technique done some sort of squibbles in the sky here to create sort of edges of the clouds choppy marks I've also used some burnt umber on the rocks and I've actually on this one um, put a little bit of white splatters afterwards with um, some white gouache or white watercolors okay uh, if, you've, if you've got any you could do that as well on, on to get a create more choppy sea spray effect so I'm just going to show you the um, what we're going to I'm looking at today I've I'm interested in um, using cooler colours, um, so we're going to be using cobalt blue, or you could use ultramarine blue, and um, some Payne's grey. I'm also going to mix up a little tiny bit of burnt umber, just so I've got some um, more browny colours for the rocks. Um, so I'm taking inspiration from this this sort of um, seascape here, simplifying it a little bit. But I'm also looking at this fantastic stormy sky and choppy sea to get some inspiration for um, the lovely cloud effect in here okay so you want to do a little sort of rough sketch not, not too much detail and mix up the paints okay so I have actually done a light sketch I've done a little sort of little rock here in, in the distance and a few rocks in the sea so I've simplified it from the photograph um, I've done my horizon line see with a straight line and I've got my white oil pastel and I'm now going to go and try and put some little sort of squiggly marks in the sky which will hopefully create the light at the tops of the clouds and I can sort of go and do nice washes over the clouds and sort of know that I'm still going to get some light effects of that happening so it's quite tricky because you can't really see what you're doing very well when you do this a little bit hit and miss So I'm trying to keep it nice and wiggly and you can hold it, sort of tilt it and hold it up to the light to sort of see where your lines are. And when you're happy, you're going to wet the sky area and create some stormy sky. Okay, so I've done some white squiggles. Hopefully I haven't done too many. Um, and I'm now going to paint... the sky area with water just lots of nice and wet so I can let the paint flow I've got a little bit of a rock sticking up there so I'm going around that okay up to my horizon line now I'm going to use the cobalt blue a bit diluted first of all and just add that into the sky area straight over the top and then we can start building in the clouds. So first layer and now we're going to start adding we're going to mix a little bit of the Payne's grey in with the cobalt blue to make a lovely sort of midnight blue colour so what we're going to then do is we're going to start darkening up some of these areas a little bit making them a bit more moody looking I'm just sort of puddling the paint in here Just using this, daubing the paint on really. Building that up. 
what we can start to do now while that's wet we can start adding some paints gray so i'm going to get a little bit of the paints gray slightly diluted and start dropping that into some of the clouds as well just to give some real nice darks to some of the base of the cloud it much more moody and we can let that run slightly let tilt it to let it run around slightly emerge bring it down run a little bit let's just let it just let it run a little bit and soften and the paints will just sort of blend themselves really you don't need to do too much to them yourself at all I might put a little bit of water on there just to let that run and down bit soften down as you can see it looks like you've got the light shining on the tops of the clouds it works quite well um, you can it's up to you how much how much you know you want to add to make that even darker I can add if I want to put a little bit more right down here I might just make these even more moody just here just right Near that horizon line building up. Make this slightly darker and menacing. And I might just soften that, let that blend again. So I just hold that and let that run, do its thing. As long as the paper's still wet, actually it's drying, it's drying underneath here. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to just touch that with a wet, damp brush just to see if I can get that to soften a little bit more. That's it. As the paint has started to dry the paper there now. That's better. Just let that flow. Good thing. I'll just lift that off a tiny bit of the tissue there. I'm just going to get a little bit of clean tissue and just lift off this bit here, just a little bit. Soften that off. And a little bit more here. And then I'm going to let, dry that off, I think, and uh, that's enough. I'll dry that off and get on with this. Okay, so I've dried that off, and as you can see, that gives you quite a nice stormy effect. Um, and what I'm going to do now, take my white oil pastel, and we're going to do some sort of choppy marks in the sea. So if you have any rocks, obviously you want some choppy marks around the edge of your rock. So I'll do those first. I've got some rocks here, so I'll do a few little wiggly marks and choppy marks here. Try and make these quite random. You don't want your marks to all be the same. Obviously, you can arrange sort of wiggles and chops. And it's quite a good idea to have a photo of a stormy sea in front of you. It actually gives you a good idea of what sort of marks you can create. Okay, so once you've done all your marks, obviously we want to then wet the sea area. If you've got any rocks, leave those dry, and we're going to use some cobalt blue. So we'll do that next. Okay, so I've done quite a lot of white wiggly marks on my sea area. Again, I hope I haven't done too many. It's, you, you never quite know until you start painting. Now I'm going to be using some clean water just to wet the sea area, like we did before just so that it allow the paint to flow nicely. I've got some rocks here. So I mean, if I get a bit of paint on the rocks, it's not the end of the world because I can just paint over them, it's fine. But it's easier if you can paint around them, if you can. So I'm just gonna slap some water on here. Okay. I can 
see already it's puddling a lot because of all the wax that I've got on this paper. Right, now, cobalt blue diluted, first of all, and then we're going to use a little bit of the paint grey. So I'm just going to come in, just put that down there. Just so I'm actually just quickly, very quickly, slapping a bit of paint on there. And now what we're going to do is we're going to get some of the Payne's Grey mixed in with the blue to make a nice sort of steely blue. Nice and much, much colder looking. So we're then going to start adding that in. see much much colder looking colour than the um, summary picture that we created. Right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start letting the paint trickle a little bit like I did last time so I'm going to get some of the mix of the, the cobalt blue mixed with a little bit of the paint grey to make that nice dark colour and I'm going to tip my board up and I'm going to Start letting the paint run and trickle. A bit like we did before. Just. Run and trickle and hopefully that will start running around and it will trickle around where the wax is. As you can see it finds its own little way. Keep adding a bit more paint and let it trickle down. Start adding a little bit of just neat um, Payne's Grey as well, just to, just to darken off a couple of areas, but even more, make them very stormy looking. from this side and colours running this direction come on I seem to want to go Good. put a bit of water in it that's it because I've got so much wax on here <laughs> stopping the paint running there. and I'm just going to build that up with a little bit more um, letting the paint trickle in between here okay and then I'm going to come back Okay, so I've um, finished painting now and dried that all off and now it's time to paint any rocks that you have. I've got a little rock here way in the distance, um, just to remind you of the photograph. Um, actually, I'm going to paint that just in, in neat Payne's grey, then I'm going to paint the rocks in a mixture of the browns. So I'm just going to put that on. Neat. Just want to be a little bit careful of your horizon line again. Now I have actually put some wax down the bottom of here, so it looks a little bit like you've got some water at the bottom of the rocks there. Okay, so that's that one in the distance. And now the, the rocks that are a little bit nearer to you, I'm going to paint those in burnt umber. Oops. And what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to, it's slightly runny actually, I'm going to 
daub some paint on, let it puddle slightly, and I'm going to actually add some of the blue to the brown. If you mix and mix blues and browns together, you get sort of nice shades of different greys, which can be quite satisfying. So I'm going to just do that to mix in with the brown. And that just gives it just on one side, so that's it. So we've got something slightly lighter in the darker side, and I'm going to do that with the one in the foreground as well. So I've got a rock here in the foreground. that blue actually it's a little bit too blue there but you'll find that if you mix the two together I say you get different nice shades of grey which are quite pleasing there there we are that's the rocks done and now what I'm going to do I'm going to dry that off and just to finish this off I think I'm going to put a few little white splatters like sea spray in the foreground Okay, so I've got my palette knife, I've mixed up some white gouache or you can use white watercolour and I'm now remembering to place a tissue over your sky, um, something I often forget and then re regret it, I'll look like a snow scene otherwise. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take some white paint and we are going to do some splattering. Well, that's what I'm going to do anyway, I'm going to do some in the foreground. So it looks as if I've got a wave here in the foreground crashing on this rock. And I may do just a little bit of sea spray around these other rocks just here as well. Just a little bit, not too much, too mad. finished it off I've got a bit of nice sea spray now in the foreground there so I'm going to dry this off and take off the tape and we're done okay so here is it all finished tape taken off which always makes it look better and I think having a few little white splatters in the foreground just sort of finishes it off nicely um, and here's the, the one I did earlier just a slightly different version um, without obviously anything on the horizon line. Hope you've enjoyed this. I'm just going to show you that if you have, um, another thing you could try using exactly the same colours is um, the technique we showed in the first session where you um, are dragging the oil pastel rather than doing such a choppy C. Um, so you could actually get sort of a, quite a nice, a different effect again by just doing that if you wanted to. I hope you've enjoyed this course. I just put this back so you can see. Um, if you have, could you please fill in the feedback form on our website to help show our funders um, that these courses are valuable. The details will be coming up along with a slideshow of some students' work. Thank you. Bye-bye.